information technologies need to be made available to Indigenous communities to ensure that they're also able to transition and reduce our carbon footprint, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, stop being exposed to toxins and petrochemicals in our bodies and our systems, um, and, tra and transitioning to a cleaner form of renewable energy. And so a lot of the objectives that we were looking at was reducing our fossil fuel dependency, engaging in a, you know, engaging communities as what is their vision um, of what they want to see happening in their community. Um, there's crippling energy costs in communities because diesel and propane is so expensive. Um, providing Indigenous communities to try to embrace different ways of producing energy actually you know tackling climate change in a tangible way as opposed to just always having to talk about it and fight for it and say no what are the yeses what are the yeses in our community um, that can bring hope and empowerment um, and so that's a part of you know bringing renewable energy and energy efficiency and better housing and eco housing and food security this is what a just transition looks like to going back to the way we actually lived a lot of the times we were net zero communities I wanted to talk a little bit about the engagement because I feel like that's really important. Um, this this toolkit it was informed by in-depth interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews with elders and knowledge keepers, um, as well as 19 community knowledge sharing workshops across so-called Canada. So we had a lot of engagement on this and this out of these workshops, ICA recognized the need to further support community-based mobilizations and climate solutions. And of course, strength, strengthen our networks regionally, nationally, and internationally, just so that we can all learn from each other and kind of work together towards a collective goal. So the toolkit goals itself are to support Indigenous people to be climate change experts. Now, I'm not going to say that taking this program is going to make you a climate change expert, but it's definitely a great start if you're looking to see, like, how do I make those steps? Where do I want to learn more? It's a very good intro introductory program, even um, for like climate science and things. So if you want to become more proficient in how to speak about climate change, we go through all of that in the program. It's super helpful. Um, and even myself, as someone that has taken more of the Western science has learned a lot through this workshop, just from community members and people in the pilot that are sharing their knowledge. So we're not just learning from me and we're not just learning from the textbook, we're going to be learning from each other in this program, which is why it's so great. And so also we wanted to support communities to develop regionally relevant and effective climate strategies. And of course, you know, energy sovereignty, safer water, food sovereignty, tons of different ways that we get into in the program on how you can do that. And again, this it's designed to how, help people determine, self-determine what will work for their community. So we will go over a ton of different examples and some may not work for your com community and some might. So it's great to just know all of those, those options and learn from them so that you can pick what's best for your community. And of course, the toolkit centers Indigenous knowledge and systems in the climate change discussion. Um, as of right now, maybe not in Indigenous world, but in the Western world, it tends to be dominated by Western science. So part of the, the purpose of the toolkit is to make sure that our knowledge is being centered there.